All right, welcome back, everybody. So this week we have Jacob Sturcherski back from Malaysia uh, to talk about water-based dyes and stain systems. Now, this is a really um, technical uh, video and it has a lot of information. So it may be one you want to watch several times and then refer back to uh, when these things pop up in your finishing. But excellent put together slideshow by Jacob and I appreciate the guys over at Malaysi. So let's get to it. So uh, I just wanted to cover uh, water-based stain systems really quick. I think that uh, a lot of people are afraid of water-based stains, uh, especially people who are working on the solvent-based side. Uh, and a lot of people are afraid of uh, spray stains. And um, I myself, with you know almost 20 years of experience, most of my life uh, didn't really... Uh, I wasn't in favor of, of water-based stains or spray stains for that matter of fact. And, and most of my career, I had a different approach working with domestic systems where uh, a lot of times um, certain looks and stains would involve a two or multiple step systems. And today with the access to you know uh, lines such as Milesi, uh and 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 having learned more about uh, this subject, uh, I have spent the last six months sort of championing the uh, the water-based stain and spray stain uh, technology and and working with it a lot and 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 training and showing it to a lot of people and convincing them that this might be the way to go and, and this applies to if you're using solvent based coatings or water based coatings it's it's really an incredible system so uh, you know i would forget everybody to sort of almost forget what they have learned in the past and, and sort of approach this with 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 clear uh slates so to speak and 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 give it a a shot or give it a chance um so uh, typically in North America, uh, you know, uh, most manufacturers, what they will do is manufacture a stain base. Um, and uh, that stain base is supplied to a paint store or a distributor or at times end user. And uh, what happens is somebody will open that can of clear stain base and start putting color in it, which typically involves, you know, uh, pigment and dye uh, to achieve certain colors. But that's pretty much that all you can do. You don't really have much control over the performance or behavior of the stain. Uh, so right here on the screen, we see, you know, like a kind of that represents a stain base. And on the next slide, um, we will show what a stain base really consists of. And, and that will help us understand the Malesi stain system, the water-based stain system. It, it actually applies for both solvent and water systems, but... Uh, we're specifically focusing on water here. So uh, one of the components of a stain base is a binder or a resin. Uh, and that binder or resin, uh, it, it generally acts as a glue uh, for, for, for the entire product. Uh, it will control uh, how much the stain penetrates into the wood substrate, uh, but it will also lock in the stain uh, from bleeding uh, and migrating into the seal coat and, you know, either distorting the color or, or even affecting the performance of, of the coating system uh, uh, sprayed over it. Um, so we have the binder and the second part of it is the vehicle, uh, the vehicle solvent, uh, which could really be a solvent, it could be water, uh, or it could be oil. And uh, what the vehicle does is obviously allows us to make a stain that is in a liquid form. It's, it's easy to apply, it allows us to brush it on, rag it on, uh, or even spray it on, uh, and then eventually evaporates. Um, leaving that binder and the collar on the surface. Uh, so that's really what composes of a stain base. 
So let me stop you real quick. I have a um, something to kind of bring up and a question about this because I've been using water-based stains for a long, a long time now. And one of the issues that comes up, and it sounds like what I'm hearing you saying is not an issue with your system. So you put your dye or stain down and then you put a water-based top coat under it. And a lot of times that will migrate through almost all the way through the finish. And you can end up, um, I've had clients stuff call me they like wipe their um you know project okay. down and you can see like red or something mm -hmm. that bled through the surface so with these binders um and resins in your all systems you you don't have that is that well, is that correct uh well yes and no so okay any any kind of stain base will always contain some kind of binder uh uh to a certain extent um the difference really is uh, that in our system, you can control how much of the binder is in the stain. Okay. So typically with stains that you will see, uh, with domestic stains that you will see that migration of the color or dye into the seal coat, uh, there could be a couple things happening. There could be uh, that that stain base uh, contains very low amounts of binder or uh, the dye or the pigments not compatible with the binder or the resin system, or uh, that it's overloaded with pigment and dye and, and that binder can't handle it and it migrates into the seal coat. But gotcha. any kind of stain base uh, typically will have a binder and that vehicle, which you know is, is the liquid in it. Okay. Um, so understanding that you know what a stain base is composed of, uh, we can move into um, what typically happens to it. So you have the stain base, which has the binder uh, and the vehicle uh, slash solvent in it. And then we put color, uh, which here I represented by these spoons with colorful powder for a lack of a better word. Uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's just symbolic, but basically stain base plus color uh, gives you a stain. Uh, and, and that's the typical approach. It's, it, it's, it's simple. It works. Uh, you know, a lot of woodworkers or finishers uh, are looking for simplicity and, and, and ease of application. So they don't necessarily want to mess around with, with uh, formulating things, but uh, there is a growing uh, group of people or companies or finishers uh, that want to push the boundaries, want to push the limits, want to uh, start producing things that uh, others can't. They want to, you know, be ahead of the pack, so to speak. And and this is where our system comes in and allows you to do some of these things. Uh, and, and I think it, it's an incredible system, and I'm. We're really happy to be part of the Blazy team and have access to these tools and, 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 and knowledge. So uh, we will move to the next slide and sort of explain how it all works. Um, so as I mentioned in our system, we actually have two systems available in North America. One is that original Italian system, which uh, you know we will have specific binders available and uh, we, we have the solvent and water uh, based uh, binders uh, and we have binders that are for spray only applications and spray and wipe, uh, meaning wiping stains. And then what you do is you select your vehicle that you uh, mix with this binder uh, and, and create your, so to speak, a stain base. Um, but uh, what does it all mean? Why? what well i'm sorry let me rewind so that's the italian system uh then knowing that in north america uh, most users don't really want to play with binders and intermixing these things we have uh, created our americanized stain based system where we have uh done a, a sort of almost a me too product where you have a ready to use stain base which you open up and you start tinting and and, and it works similar to you know ml campbell sean williams a chroma or a camcraft or any of these other uh, manufacturers but uh my focus is more on the italian style uh, stains as i believe it gives you really some really amazing and impressive tools to manipulate stains so um 
looking at this, again, this sort of represents a can of stain, uh, which has some binder and it has some of the vehicle solvent in our case would be water. Um, oops, sorry. Um, and in this case, it's, it's not a lot of binder in this stain base. Uh, and what this equals is uh, when you have a little binder, uh, the stain is able to penetrate deeper into the wood because nothing's really stopping it as much. Uh, so you have more clarity of, uh, the, 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 or the stain has more clarity as it's sitting more deeper into the wood grain, giving you a better definition of the grain, uh, more contrast between certain grain uh, um, structures. Um, it, it shows you more of the background color of the wood. Uh, because it's not covering that wood, it's, it's penetrating into it. Um, but at the same time, it has less uniformity as you have, let's say, multiple different planks of the same wood. Sometimes they might vary in color as you're using a stain that penetrates deeper into the wood and shows more of that original color of the wood, you will see these differences. Um, so uh, it has less uniformity, but at the same time, more character. Uh, and these stains, because of low content of the binder resin, will mark the wood pour uh, a lot better, in some cases creating uh, blotchiness, let's say, on maple uh, or, or softer woods. Uh, then um, if you compare it to a stain that has more binder, uh, in this case, um, we have less penetration of the wood substrate. The binder is stopping that stain from penetrating and it's uh, causing the stain to sit more over the wood versus inside or, or deeper into the wood. And in cases where you have uh, the stain sitting over the wood, you get more opacity, uh, you get more neutralization of uh, the original wood substrate's color. Uh, so if you have oak or ash uh, and you want to create a vivid blue color, uh, you would use more binder in this case because you want that pigment to cover the wood instead of sort of dyeing the wood in a way. Um, it gives you more uniformity, uh, again, as it's sitting over the wood, you know, different planks of wood, different uh, slight uh, colors are, are a little bit more neutralized because the stain's sitting over it and, and covering it. And obviously it, it has a displays less marking of the wood pore uh, and, and less blotchiness. So if you were uh, staining maple or another, or some wood that's very soft, you could use more binder to prevent that blotchiness. Uh, in domestic stain systems, let's say ML Campbell, uh, which I'm very familiar with, um, there are actually two different stain bases. There is B10, which is regular stain base, and there's a B20, which is high uh, solid stain base. That high solid stain base will contain more binder, which uh, will kind of act in a similar way. Or uh, a lot of times people will use conditioners where they will use a clear stain base and stain uh, the wood substrate with that prior to applying their colored stain. In this case, they're pretty much using that clear stain base and the binder in it to sort of block uh, the penetration of the actual stain. Uh, in our system, you can do that in one step. You can just increase that binder amount and in one application, you can prevent blotchiness and you can get high opacity, high intensity of the color, uh, uniformity. Uh, and um, especially today with current trends, you know, the gray colors, which are slowly fading, but are still here, uh, they're, they're a lot of times really difficult to achieve on substrates. Uh, that have high density such as oak or ash or hickory because that uh, wood doesn't want to accept all this pigment and you always see that <coughs> color, uh, original wood color coming through and to achieve a gray color you will typically have to do a two-step system when you're toning or shading or dyeing or bleaching. Uh, again, with our system you can achieve all that in one step application. Um, and uh, just to 
Well, actually, I'll show the sample set <coughs> towards the end. So, so that's what, uh, that's one of the tools that our system will give you, is varying that binder amount will give you these different performances of the stain. Um, and, and here you can actually see on the screen a good example. Uh, it's the same stain, the same uh, piece of wood cut in a half. Uh, one has 30% uh, binders on the left, and then on the right you have 5% binders. So you can clearly see that the one on the left has more opacity. Uh, it, it, it's more of a covering stain versus the one on the right. Uh, you can see more definition of the grain and, and more variation. In this case, the wood is pretty nice and even. Uh, so uh, it's not as apparent, but having them side by side, you can see that the one with more binder has more opacity and almost uniformity and covers that wood uh, in a greater or, or, or more uh, coverage or opacity than the one on the right. Um, right. And so what I want to bring up just before you continue on with my experience with um, water base is... I, with any system I've used in North America, I've never been able to to do this. Um, I'm either using like Lockwood, which is a powdered dye, or General Finishes has a, a dye stain, so it has some binder in it, but it's not near what this is. So what I've always had to do was is some type of, uh, I call it a blotch control or a pre-stain. Mm -hmm. um, and so either, you know, there's lots of ways that you can obviously do that. You can use, you know, shellac or vinyl sealer or um, I have one that a buddy of mine came up with, a blotch control um, <clears throat> that I use and I'm actually going to be showing. I wish I had known this before I did this um, stair job because I would have um, – been able to uh, show this with the Malaysia products, but mm -hmm. um, guys are going to get to see kind of different ways to do it. And this is kind of good because this will, um, I'll kind of talk about that on um, while I'm doing that, that you can control this, but it's always been a frustration with me because depending on the type of wood, like if it's pine or something, I may have to do two, per, two treatments of a blotch control to keep it up off mm -hmm. the wood and then on the flip side then I'll, I'll that's one of the reasons why i've liked water base um dyes and stain is because you know if i do something which you know you may not be able to see it in this small but is a yeah. some flame birch where mm -hmm. i want this to go into the wood and blotch um and i'm sitting behind this is a piece i've been working on for a while now and i want that to penetrate like what you're showing there um all with the less binder uh, so i just want to you, 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 you're exactly right, and I'm glad you actually mentioned this because this goes along uh, everything that I'm saying is, uh, you know, if you are using a poor substrate or you're trying to, uh, you know, use a, I guess, a, a cheaper uh, or, or lower cost uh, of, of lumber, you can hide that with higher binder content. Um, right. If you, uh, you know, doing those gray looks or even white washes which are becoming popular uh mm -hmm. in some cases you have to bleach uh today now you can avoid this you don't even have to bleach you can just use create formulate a stain that will give you that bleached look or that extreme whitewash with just one step application and all the uh, methods that you have mentioned you know um Preconditioning in the wood, you're pretty much putting binder into the wood prior to the stain application. Uh, using shellac or even uh, some kind of wash coats, uh, you're using the resin or a binder in the coating and, and applying it over the surface uh, to again control uh, that penetration of, of of the stain and avoid blotchiness. And yet at the same time, if you are using an uh, exotic a wood uh, like the one that you have shown or something that has beautiful grain, you don't want to cover that grain. In this case, right. you want to have less binder. You really want the stain to penetrate and give you a beautiful contrast and really expose that grain. Mm -hmm. um, and even dealing with customers who are ordering 
you know, kitchen cabinets or furniture, a lot of my customers are always complaining that, you know, uh, this lady or this customer was complaining because there was minor differences in the grain from different planks. And we're trying right. to explain to her that, you know, this is wood. That's the beauty of the wood. Well, today it can go either way. Uh, sure. you know, somebody might appreciate that and, 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 and is what they're looking for. In other cases, people are just, you know, um, are expecting this very even look, almost a laminate look. And now you can sort of control this and, and really do some amazing things. Uh, so uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, so here's another example um, on Alder. Um, you'll have, you know, you'll have less binder on, on top where uh, you can see a little bit more of the grain, a little bit more blotchiness, although it's not terrible. Uh, it does show up a little bit more uh, versus on the bottom where, uh, you know, it, it, it almost looks painted in a way, but you can still see some of that grain uh, sure. characteristic. And uh, another, another thing here is that you can really achieve dark looks with, again, one step application. You put more binder in it and that will uh, take your pigment load or dye or pigment together a lot further because instead of dyeing the wood, it sits over it and, and really uh, gives you the appearance of more of an intense and stronger color. Uh, so, um, you know, it, 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 it's a nice tool to have and, and here is the same two stains on actual doors. You have uh, less binder in the top where you can really see the grain formation, uh, where on the bottom uh, it looks extremely uniform. Uh, even though it might look too painted for most people, you know, it's, it's just an extreme example to show really uh, the differences that you can achieve. Um, and today with muted looks, earthy tones, grays, whitewashes. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's good to have that ability to in adding more binder to achieve these things. Um, so you have any questions on this so far? No, I mean, uh, it makes total sense to me. I, I hope that, you know, me bringing those questions up, it helps people to understand, you know, kind of, you know, what's been the problem with water-based systems in the past? Um, and so typically what I will end up doing is if someone wants a more uh, muted look, I tend to reach for a solvent-based product um, because they don't tend to blotch as much because they have more of those binders in them. Um, and so, but I just think this is an awesome, this is what I've been searching for because now I can use one product instead of, you know, Lockwood, this one, mm -hmm. that one, um, yeah. instead of jumping around, I can just, you know, invest in one system and have the ability to do everything I want instead of having, you know, to carry Lockwood dies or general finishes dies or, you know, whatever, you know, system that you have. Yeah. And it's not only about, you know, the range of products that you need to keep, but it's also about saving labor, which is multiple steps, uh, and time. Uh, which equals right. cost. So, uh, you know, with instead of doing multiple steps and, and, and having less of a profit, you can do one step application and still end up with a high end, uh, high performing kind of uh, coding system. So uh, I, I think this is huge. And, and I have been really seeing good feedback from uh, end users and customers and our distributors out there. Uh, they're all very excited about having this ability. Um, so this is one way of controlling the stain uh, in our system. Um, then there's another, there's a second uh, sort of option uh, that allows you to control it even further. Uh, and it's the vehicle the solvent, uh, in this case water, uh, uh, speed of evaporation. Um, that also gives you some ability uh, to control the behavior of the stain. So it's not only choosing the ratio of binder ver versus water, for example, but it also uh, depends on 
affecting the evaporation rate of the water or solvent in some cases, uh, which will also produce certain results. And um, here, um, you know, there's uh, sort of a slide that uh, illustrates that once you apply the stain with a lot of binder or little binder, either way, that vehicle, that solvent, that water will eventually evaporate. Uh, and what the speed of evaporation will do is will, it will give you similar results to adjusting the amount of binder. Uh, in this case, uh, again, uh, we have the same stain, believe it or not, uh, same piece of wood, it was cut in a half, the, actually it switched around, uh, so the grain doesn't match, but right. uh, it's the same, it, it was literally a stain and binder uh, that was split in a half by weight and we used a different uh, vehicle. Uh, in this case, it was a solvent-based uh, stain, but uh, this doesn't really have any implications here because we can do the same thing with water. So uh, the one on the left uh, was evaporating fast. This means that, again, the stain didn't have enough time to penetrate deeper into the wood. And again, it's sitting over the substrate, neutralizing that background color, covering the wood, giving it more uniformity and less blotchiness. Uh, where I, the one on the right I was using a slow... Uh, vehicle, uh, which took a lot longer to evaporate, therefore it had more time to penetrate into the wood, and you can see more of the natural color of the wood, uh, but you will see also more blotchiness and, and more grain definition. Um, so I think this illustrates it very well. Um, I'm sorry. Um, now, I do have a question because it goes in line with... Um, what I do with some of this, um, you know, figured wood. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes what I, what I end up doing with this is I will, I will, I will dye it and let it, um, you know, sink down in. And then I put like a, another sealer coat on it. And then I want less, um, in it the second time, because a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put it in and I'll sand it back and I just want it to stick in these, areas and then I want this background lighter. Now could you achieve something like that by doing one step where you yes. do a darker and then when you come back increase or slow down the evaporation rate to control how much, you know, depth it does the second time instead of having to like reseal it. Yes, yes. Okay. You can. Awesome. Uh so yeah, th those are all all things that you can achieve with this. You can slow down the evaporation, allow it to penetrate, at the same time keep uh you know, control the blotchiness by using the binder. Uh, it's really it's really such a versatile system with, you know, multiple uh variables where you know, I'm trying to explain it here in this presentation visually uh but it's not even coming close to really showing off the abilities of sure. what uh, can be achieved with that. It, it's really playing with this for a little bit and, and sort of experimenting to see uh, what type of effect you can achieve on different species and with different uh, combinations of these products. And, and, and then there's another sort of uh, element to it, which uh, I will cover next. Um, but yes, definitely, you know, back in the day, people used to, we talked about preconditioning and, and sort mm -hmm. of preventing blotchiness and, and the wood from a, absorbing too much, uh, of the stain. Um, so people used to, or, or getting certain intensity of the stain. So people used to, let's say, dye the wood, spraying dyes onto the wood and then applying a wiping stain over it. Uh, right. I've done this myself many times in the past and, you know, it gives it certain level of depth. Uh, to the uh, to the stain or the color, but at the same time, when you apply a dye without any binder and you're applying wiping stain over it, it will remelt the dye and sort of drag it around. Right. Uh, for those reasons, people started uh, doing wash coats over the dye and then applying a wiping stain. But with wash coat, a lot of times you can't see how much of it you're applying from one piece to another, and there can be a variation that you won't see until you apply that wiping stain when it's might be too late. So, right. you know, if you're doing, let's say a picture frame, uh, it's 
typically not an issue, but if right. you're doing a, a run of, you know, 80 doors for a very large kitchen, that can become uh, problematic. So again, having it in one step uh, in a stain that you uh, control in such a way gives you the desired effect at the same time, uh, gives you ease of production and being able to replicate every piece the same way. Yeah, that's uh, one of the issues that I've always had with, you know, exactly what you're talking about. You put like a wash coat or um, something like that. A lot of these woods, you know, depending on how much soft green is exposed, like in maples and things like that, especially like a soft maple is worse. Um, it, it you never it's never consistent. So, I mean, we've tried all kinds of things. You know, you, you try to spray on the stain. Um, there's just you know, all these little tricks and this to me just takes all that out um, and just makes it so easy to control. I, I agree. And, you know, uh, I, I should have even mentioned this earlier at the beginning, but just, you know, the difference between solvent and water stains. Um, I believe that with water based stains, you can achieve more intensity uh, when you compare tint loads, uh, the same tint load in solvent and water will, in water will produce a darker, more intense uh, color. Um, water has a specific way of affecting wood where it gives you uh, good uniformity, uh, but at the same time it gives you good grain exaltation, meaning that you have nice evenness and opacity, yet at the same time, you have excellent grain definition and clarity. So it's something that you can not achieve with solvent-based things. And right. uh, I work with a lot of high-end users that uh, will use acrylic urethanes or solvent-based coatings or even BCA, but uh, for the stain systems, they use water-based because certain looks can only be achieved with water-based stains and, and cannot be reproduced with solvent. And uh, this is the way that, again, they're trying to sort of uh, separate themselves from the rest of, of their competitors. Um, another thing is that, you know, a lot of people are afraid of water-based stains because they raise the wood fibers and they roughen up the surface. Uh, this is not a bad thing. Uh, in my opinion, uh, roughing up that surface actually provides more adhesion. Uh, it's, it's like, you know, you're scratching and etching the surface for the coating to adhere to. If the water-based stains roughens up that uh, surface slightly, the coating going over it will have a better adhesion to that surface. And uh, a lot of times in domestic uh, stain systems, there's a certain tint load uh, with stain bases. And once you exceed that, what happens is that uh, that pigment or dye will end up sitting over uh, the wood substrate. It will, it will not penetrate all the way. It will just stay on top of it, compromising right. the adhesion of the clear coat going over it or even affecting the performance of that clear coat. But since the surface is rougher with water, you can actually use more pigment and allow it to sit over the surface because you're not worried about adhesion now. And, and water-based pigments are neutral enough where even if it is left sitting on the surface, uh, it won't chemically compromise uh, the coating going over it. So uh, water-based systems or water-based stains are, are really impressive today. And uh, a lot of production shops, high-end production shops, will use water-based spray stains because you have fast application, uh, you don't have to wipe it, you're not wasting rags, you're moving faster. At the same time, uh, it allows you to spray and get uniformity even between different operators spraying in different booths uh, as long as they're trained for 10, 15 minutes on how to spray water-based spray system or uh, water-based spray uh, stains. Uh, wood has a way of absorbing water that will even out uh, these pieces sprayed differently or a different atomization or different amount to a certain degree. And then uh, halo effects when you have five piece doors or, or uh, full assembled drawer boxes or cabinets, you can actually spray at low atomization 
uh, a water-based stain and it will migrate through the woods towards that corner and give you an absolutely perfect look without any halos. So uh, it is amazing what you can do with, with water-based stains. Yeah, and that's um, one of the things that guys ask me about a lot is like how the spray stains work on a raised panel door. I'm like, look, man, you spray it out and it comes out perfect. <laughs> you don't. I, and they, <laughs> I, I can, we can, you know, these two stains here were sprayed. Those were uh, water-based spray stains. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, this past week in Denver, as I was uh, training customers, we sprayed five-piece doors uh, with uh, spray stain for that specific reason to show that there's no halos. It, it, it is absolutely perfect. And I have some images and even a video of a spray stain being applied and how well it uh, connects uh, and, and avoids that halo effect, which I can show you really quick, maybe later, but yeah. And also yeah. if you guys um, go to my LinkedIn or Instagram, I did the door for HGH and I don't think I didn't really talk about it, but that was over a, um, it wasn't the Malaysia. It was, it was the renter, but you mm -hmm. know, you can do the same thing with the Malaysia, but that was a paint grade door. And I sprayed that black smoke stain over it and put the Malaysia water base on top of it. And it was gorgeous. And I don't think that people really realize, you know, that was not a, a stain grade, you know, door. Like it was about as bad as you could get. Yeah. And yeah. it looked beautiful. And, and, and those are what these doors were. I mean, they were in standard. Yeah. It was something I was doing during a, a, a training session. And we just grabbed the door, uh, the two doors that were somewhere in the back of the warehouse and just spray them. And, and this is right. what, we, what we achieved. So um, having said that, you know, we're talking about evaporation uh, of the vehicle and, and the differences that it can uh, produce as well as, as the binder. Um, here, um, just to give people a quick idea is how you can manipulate that vehicle uh, evaporation rate. Uh, you know, on the left is our items that you can use to manipulate the evaporation rate of water. Uh, you know, obviously water has 0.3 uh, uh, evaporation uh, level uh, comparing to a butyl acetate. And then you can see that, you know, the two products below LTC5 and LTC31, which are water-based retarders uh, that we make, uh, will slow that down uh, while using isopropyl alcohol, denatured alcohol, or acetone will significantly speed that up. Right. Uh, so this is just an idea of what you can use. On the right, you have some of our Milesi core solvents that we use with our coatings that we also use in formulation of our solvent-based stains. And you can see different evaporation rates from, you know, uh, the top one uh, being acetone, being really fast to the slow retarder on the bottom. Um, so this is just to give people an idea that there are products or, or things that will allow you to speed up or slow down this uh, evaporation rate. Um, and here I, I put a little chart together, which I think uh, should make it a little bit easier for people to understand. Um, and I can obviously send you later all this so you, uh, you have a copy uh, in your files, uh, but Basically, it shows you that increased binder, more binder will give you more opacity, uniformity, and intensity. Less binder will give you more clarity, contrast, and definition. Uh, fast evaporation uh, will give you opacity, uniformity, intensity, and slower evaporating stains will give you more clarity, contrast, and uh, more definition. So it's a kind of a nice chart that, that puts it all together in one uh, and might be helpful to some people. Um, so having covered that, um, there's also pigments, uh, which is another uh, and last point of what makes our stain system different than the North American systems uh, available. So typically in North America, uh, people will use pigment pastes, which are, let's say, 844s, 896s, or any kind of universal type of pigment. Uh, that is used, uh, you know, in stains, glazes, and pigmented coatings slash paints. Um, Which I just want to stop you one second. Now, 
because a lot of people that are new to this, like that a lot of guys in the States refer to him as UTC. So if you hear that acronym, that's what mm -hmm. he's referring to. Okay. Um, so you have pigment paste and then there will be dyes. Uh, those are the two, uh, typically two coloring systems that are used in North American stains. Uh, pigments will give you a lot of opacity uh, and then dyes uh, are, are a finer um, sort of a particle uh, that will give you more clarity, depth, flip and more brilliance. And actually these, these circles or these uh, circular shapes on the screen they're they're actually supposed to symbolize something it's it symbolizes the size of particle to which each one of those products is ground to so we all know that pigments are being ground to a certain size uh and then put into a solution or a resin to create a pigment paste and if you looked under a microscope you would see that these universal general type of pigments will be a very large particle where dyes are a much smaller particle which allows them to be more uh, transparent so to speak uh, and that's what typically north american stains will consist of now um, if you look at pigments and dyes actually this kind of uh, connects with what i just said you know on the left you have a pigment uh, the very left picture will be pigment by itself and then the uh, picture right next to it is a pigment diluted with uh, let's say solvent or water you still s you can see through it but you can see that it has some opacity where uh, the two right pictures are uh, a dye in its uh, pure form or, or a liquid form and then a diluted dye which you can see has a lot more transparency than the pigment uh, so these two products are typically used in North American stains to uh, to achieve the color. Uh, now, when we look at Italian systems, we actually used something called micronized pigments. And micronized pigments are something in between uh, dye and a pigment paste. Uh, so this would be the core of our stain system here in North America. It's a micronized pigment, which uh, is a more of a liquid form. It has good opacity, but it still has some uh, some transparency that gives you nice depth uh, and stains. And uh, it's nice because the core of the system is just one um, one series of pigments. You don't need dyes. You don't need anything else. You have typically in, in water-based system, I think six. Uh, pigments that you can achieve a lot of uh, looks that normally you would need dyes or, or pigment pastes for. Uh, now, on top of this, we use dyes and at times we even use the pigment paste that we use normally in our pigmented coatings as additional tools. So, uh, you know, on this screen you will see that um, the size of the particle that each one of these products is uh, and the level of transparency. Uh, but it also shows you that the core of the system has one series of pigment, but we have additional tools that can take it even further. Um, the entire system would consist of all three, uh, but not all three are necessary. Um, and just to kind of explain it better, if you look at this screen here, you'll see that dyes are somewhat pretty transparent. Micronized pigments are in the middle, while pigment pastes are very opaque. And this is important to consider when you're mixing certain stains, because not it's not only about the color, it's about how the stains mark the grain pore, and also what kind of brilliance and transparency these stains have. Uh, so not only you can come control it with the amounts of binders and evaporation rate uh, of the vehicle, but you can control it by choosing the right tool to use to color these uh, stains. Um, again, in our system, the main component is that micronized pigment, uh, which 
in a water-based uh, side would be the CHT pigments. Uh, this is the range of pigments that we will use to uh, achieve most of our stains. So there is uh, nine colors uh, that we currently have. Um, like I said, they, they're, they're not thick paste, they're in a liquid form, easy to use, and all you need to start using the system is a scale. You don't need any dispensers or any of that, or even uh, rags that would stir your, you know, pigments typically. Um, so with these nine pigments, uh, we are able to achieve all the colors that we have formulated for our ready to use stain brochure. Uh, I don't know if you have a copy of this, but I'm sure a lot of uh, your viewers have seen this chart. There's 32 pre-formulated colors, and all these colors were achieved with three or four pigments from that CHT line. There's no dyes in here whatsoever. Uh, so it just illustrates that such a small offering, you can achieve so much. Uh, but then on top of this, you can use dyes. Uh, and, you know, dyes that we uh, offer here in North America are universal, so they will work both in solvent and water side. Um, and obviously dyes will have more transparency and brilliance, but they will also mark the pore of the wood uh, a lot more than the pigment which will cover the, the pore uh, or, or the wood uh, grain. And then there's the pigment paste, which we normally don't use in stains. Uh, we will use them only in pigmented coatings, but with today's trends on these white washes, grays, and muted looks with lots of opacity, uh, every once in a while we will use some of our pigment paste to really give you a lot of coverage and opacity. And here is the range for both solvent and water. Uh, these are the HMT pastes on the water-based side. Um, so all three of these is a, a, you know, will give you an extreme range of tools to really uh, produce any kind of look you want in one step application. Um, and here is another good example of what each one of them will give you. So. CHT pigment, which is the base and core of our of our system. Then you will have dyes, which will really mark that pore in the wood and give you that uh, more of a definition, which can be good on certain woods like oak, but with maple and, uh, you know, it could produce a lot of blotchiness. And then there's the HMT paste, which is our pigmented uh, sort of great uh, pigment paste that will give you extreme opacity, that can give you, you know, almost a painted look, but still in a stained form. Um, so now so, your your dyes, are they um, uh, are they a powder or are they already liquid? Um, they're, they're a liquid, um, okay. they're, a, they're a liquid form. Um, our dyes are pretty unique, uh, because they're high quality dyes. Um, that will contain microscopic metal flakes. Uh, they're not visible to human eye, but that, uh, that microscopic metal flake, what it does is it helps reflect the UV light, uh, causing the dye to be more stable and not fade as quickly as some of the domestic dyes available on the market. That um, was going to be my next question, is if it was a metal complex, that's what that's what they've called them here. I'm sure you've probably heard that complex, term as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's so, interesting. I've, I've actually never heard it described like that. I've just always known that, you know, for what I want, I always try to get a metal complex dye because I know that it's going to resist those uh, fading. But I didn't realize that that's what was actually going on was there was little metal flakes in there. That's pretty mm -hmm. cool to know. And, uh, you know, this this is a good thing, but it also has uh, sort of a drawback because um, if you were going to use such a dye in a stain that would go under a acid catalyzed products such as solvent based pre cat lacquer or conversion varnish that is catalyzed with acid the acid and metal uh you know will cause a reaction um and this is one of the reasons why when we formulated our 32 ready to use colors we only use the micronized pigments you know we would like to assume and would like to uh you know 
all end users that are using our stains to use our products over them, uh, right. like the water-based or, or polyurethane or acrylics. Uh, but in some <coughs> cases, they might use precatalyzed lacquer conversion varnish and then have a reaction. So for safety reasons, all the colors in that brochure are formulated with micronized pigments with no dyes. So really, that dye is an additional tool that you can uh, add to your range of, uh, you know, um, color agents as, as you get more comfortable with this stain system, so to speak. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I would, I would definitely want to have the dyes for some of the stuff that I do. Um, and here, you know, uh, this kind of shows uh, the, 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 the sort of drawing on the right top corner will show you the dyes, you know, how they affect the grain pore and how it will mark it where pigment will lay over it and sort of make it uh, more opaque and more uniform. So here you can see uh, I did two different tests. Uh, obviously the dye color and the pigment color doesn't uh, match exactly. So uh, the colors here are not what we're looking for. We're looking for um, how the dye affects the grain. And you can see um, that, especially on the green here, it's the same piece of maple, how the dye sort of made it really blotchy, uh, you know, on these little softer fibers of, uh, of maple where the pigment sort of covers it and makes it sort of uniform. Um, so it's important important to understand how all these things affect stains. So um, with all these tools, with the binders and the ratio of the binder, with uh, manipulating the evaporation rate of the stain and really choosing the right coloring agent, so to speak, uh, you can achieve anything and you can achieve uh, a high quality, high end look and uh, most of the time in one step application. So saving labor, uh, time, which equals cost. So uh, I, I think it's a pretty exciting thing. Here is a black color over ash, uh, water-based space stain, one-step application, solid black. Uh, normally you would do at least two steps to achieve mm -hmm. this or spray this with a pigmented coating, which right. could kind of, uh, you know, sort of take away from the grain, open grain uh, look. Um, yeah, and when you're saying that, that's kind of almost like um, like uh, using a top coat and toning in. It kind of it. I never have been a fan of that. It just it it really. I don't know. I just don't like the look. It's a good way to get away from that. That's that, that, that's exactly what it is, and that's exactly kind of how we stumbled upon this. Uh, I had a customer who uh, was trying to do this using a coating. It was a, it was a, a mm -hmm. red. Uh, oak look uh, that they wanted to spray with a pigmented sealer thinned out but it either was giving them too much build or too much opacity they wanted to have that opaque color but still have a little bit of that uh, wood uh, character and yeah. so we basically took that formulation of the pigmented coating and put that into a spray stain and, and started achieving these uh, great muted high opacity looks yet still retaining the look of the wood uh here's another color uh it's kind of like an olive green gray over ash uh, and you know this was achieved really you can take any benjamin moore color sherwin williams color or even our fandex and say hey i want uh dove white but in a spray stain and so now this nice. is possible yeah uh, you know, here is uh, a gray look over walnut, and this is actually one of my favorites. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well, uh, but this kind of illustrates well what water-based stains can do. It gives you nice, even opacity and mm -hmm. neutralizing of the color, yet it still keeps the uh, grain definition very right. crisp. So um, this blue, which I'm sure a lot of people already have seen. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. But that's a very vibrant color over trying to get good light on it, uh, uh, seen somewhere on online or LinkedIn or Instagram, but it's a vibrant color uh, over ash, which again, one step application and you can completely change uh, the original look of the wood. 
Um, here is a gray oak, a very light gray oak, uh, but still one step application. Um, so that's one end of the spectrum where you have that opacity and neutralizing of the color. And then um, we have something like this where I slow down the evaporation of the stain and really allowed to penetrate into the wood and show you the differences between the grain and really give you a range of colors, even though it's still right. kind of nice and uh, has some opacity to it as it meant to be, but you still see that uh, grain uh, formation. Um, and I guess the last one, this one's a little bit shiny, so it's hard to see. It has a, a solvent-based sealer on it, so it's, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but nope, it's too shiny. It was a nice. You you had it there. Get it. Take it back and kind of get it from that rake lighting coming in. There you go. That's it. Yeah. So it has nice, really nice depth and grain definition on the rosewood. In this case, we used very low binder and slow down the stain to really penetrate into it. We used some dye to highlight that grain and give it good contrast. So to really get started with it, all it takes is six pigments, the micronized pigments and either a stain base or you can just get the binder and mix it with water yourself, which is gives you more control and uh, it, it's a, a lower cost option because you're using water. Right. So So now um, with the uh, the binder um, set up, is it just uh, you just get the the binder and then you just mix it with water however you like? Um, so there is there's a little bit of a method of, uh, to it, or at least a method that I found to be the easiest. It was it was difficult for me at first from coming from tinting stains for so many years where I opened the can and started adding pigment and dye. Uh, it was hard for me to sort of get a grasp. How do I know how much water, how much binder do I add versus pigment? Um, what has helped me and and I have visual aids for that as well, which I'm not going to pull up now, but uh, is to formulate uh, the same way that Italians do. So basically in North America, um, typically what you will do is you will have certain amount of base, let's say one liter of base. And on top of this, you put your pigment and dye. So once you have the color, you end up with one liter plus of the ready to use stain. Uh, Italians take a different approach where they will calculate how much of each component they need to arrive at one liter exactly of the ready to use mixed stain. And the way that it works is basically, I will start, we have the binder, which is first. And what I, what I will typically do is I will do a hundred gram for, uh, formulas to sort of test the color and, and see, uh, you know, if I'm moving in the right direction. And and then 100 grams is not really uh, that much product. Uh, by the way, obviously, we mix our stains by weight as right. it's the most accurate way. So uh, to achieve a 100 gram formula, what I will do is I will start with a binder. In this case, is CLC20 binder, which is a water-based spray only binder. A good standard starting point is 20%. Uh, so I will start with 20 grams of binder and then I will put my color in. So uh, I will do two white and, you know, half a gram of yellow, one orange and four black. Uh, so now I have my binder, I have my color in it. I usually total that, which you can see here on the bottom, it's 27.5. Now I will calculate how much water to put in there to arrive at 100 gram total of the stain. Uh, so in this case would be uh, obviously 72.5 grams of water, which gives me 100 grams total mixture. Gotcha. So cool. I know it seems kind of like a lot at first, but it really is something that helped me understand this. Basically, uh, binder, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30%, depending on the look, the color, uh, the wood substrate that I'm working with. Once I have my binder, uh, then I typically have an idea of what colors I want to mix. 
uh, if somebody is good with mixing colors and have been mixing colors for years, it's not an issue. You know, they know that white and black will give them gray. I mean, everybody knows that. Uh, so you put your color in it, and however much color you have, is it 10% or 30%, uh, you always end up filling up the rest to achieve that 100 grams of, of uh, uh, with water uh, to arrive at the final um, you know, amount of stain that you want to have. And obviously, this can be scaled up. It could be 1,000 grams. It could be, uh, you know, 10,000 grams. Uh, right. So uh, it, it's just a way of showing how, how to formulate it uh, and, and how to sort of have an easier grasp on it. Um, but um, in any case, with our customers, if they are interested and they have a local distributor, you know, it's something that um, that we are willing to do. I, uh, I do some weekly basis. I will go in and either train my distributors so they can train their um, end users or their customers, or a lot of times uh, I will go into an end user shop uh, and uh, train them for a few hours on how to uh, mix these stains. And obviously at this point, we do the presentation, but we also do hands-on. And after only a few hours, they're pretty comfortable with mixing these stains. And sure. It's pretty amazing what you can do. Yeah. I'm excited, man. This is awesome because this fits in perfectly with a lot of the stuff I do because I'm all over the map. <laughs> That's good. You know, one, one week I might be doing a furniture piece. The next week I might be spraying cabinets, you know, so – um yeah this is great i'm i definitely um i've talked with dc about this system and also with matt slater and so but now having this it uh further because i need a way now at this point to control things more um i'm just at that point in my career where like i need more control and this mm -hmm. is the way this is going to give me you know the whole kit and caboodle right here yeah Definitely, you know, Matt <clears throat> Slater, I actually went, uh, took a trip out there and, and have done a little training session with him. And I know he's mixing some of his uh, stains uh, already for, for the past few months. Uh, DC is obviously uh, one of my distributors, so we have spent time training as well. Uh, and he's been with me in, in Italy, so uh, he had extensive training on the system. But uh, even I myself, uh, you know, I'm always learning. I'm learning every day. Sure. Uh, every time I do a training, every time I work with somebody else, uh, I learn a little bit more about it and 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 furthering my knowledge. So I think that's an important part of our business is always learning and, and improving your craft. And I'm definitely more comfortable with these stains today than I was a week ago or six months ago. So sure. uh, I hope only to get better and obviously provide our customers uh, with with more help, more knowledge, uh, more insight, and and in general further uh, help evolve the industry and 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 the standards uh, of the industry. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much um, for doing this. Um, if do you want to? Um, I know you're really busy, but I also uh, offer that if somebody needs to reach out to you, um, what's the best way um, to get a hold of you? So I would say it would be probably uh, an email, um, although sometimes I might be a bit slow answering my emails as I'm uh, constantly in the field. Uh, so uh, typically a text message is good okay. uh, or, or even through Instagram account. And um, so, yeah, that, that is probably the best way. Well, hey, man, thanks so much. This was great. Um, and, um, I'm, at, I'm excited to, uh, kind of get, get the system myself and play with it. Cause this is exactly what I've been looking probably six months going, well, I use this here, but I really want something that's just cohesive that I can have more control with it. And this looks like the answer to me. Absolutely. It, it, it definitely is. And like I said, you can start simple and easy and you can build upon that system, which is the nicest yeah. thing. So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot, man. And we'll catch you guys next time. Bye. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. A um, couple of things. I have Adam Hesselrod, Sam Yunt from HGH Hardware here in Nashville coming to my shop next week. And Don uh, Winsel 
from Anesta Wada. And we're going to be, actually, this was kind of perfect timing. We're going to be looking at shooting uh, Malaysia products through air assisted airless through the Anesta Wada systems. Now, a lot of guys don't know that Anesta Wada has air assisted airless. Um, I'm not sure if Don's going to bring some other stuff. We may look at um, some of the other things that he has as well. But we're going to be honing in on that and dialing in the pressures and the fluid and the air and all that stuff. Um, and we'll make sure that we get some links that you guys can get Anesta Water Products if you're interested. So anyway, uh, that'll do it for today. You can catch me at Instagram, at Eric Reason, Facebook, at Eric Reason, LinkedIn, at Eric Reason, and TikTok, at Eric Reason. And remember, of all, above all, tests don't guess. We'll catch you next week.